Why News with Angelo Castro the Third, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee has summoned presidential son Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte and his brother-in-law, Attorney Man Scarpio, to attend its upcoming hearing on the alleged corruption in the Bureau of Customs. Nel Marie Buhok will tell us why. The next Senate hearing on Thursday, September 7, will focus on the revelations in the August 23 privileged speech of Senator Panfilo Lacson. This includes some details on the alleged corrupt activities happening in the Bureau of Customs or BOC, particularly the receiving of Tara or Greece money of some BOC officials and employees in exchange of the faster release of cargoes. Um, nabanggit kanina ni Senator Gordon, the issue on Thursday will be already the privileged speech of Senator Lacson, which is the issue on Tara. Invited during the hearing of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee are Presidential Son Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte and Brother-in-Law Attorney Manasseh Scarpio. Both are allegedly linked to the so-called Davao Group. If they were my son or they're my family, expect them to be uh, on a higher plane than ordinary citizens. Na kahit na konting quip, sagutin nila. Meanwhile, both the Vice Mayor and Carpio have signified their intention to attend the Senate probe. This Malacanang confirms. Well, that will be their prerogative. But they have definitely, definitely said that they are willing to face. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Senator Richard Gordon is confident that his ethics complaint against Senator Antonio Trillanes IV will progress in the committee level. Nel Marie Bohok is back to tell us why. The Senate Majority Bloc has conducted the caucus early this afternoon. Among the agenda taken up was the ethics complaint filed by Senator Richard Gordon against Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. Senator Gordon says around 14 senators have signified their support to the complaint. I mean, I have the support of more than, more than 10, more than 12, more than 14. The ethics complaint stems from the heated argument between the two senators during last week's billion peso shabu shipment probe by the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee. Senate President Aquilino Coco Pimentel assures a fair treatment on the complaint. Ah, babasahin po natin yun at saka hintayin natin yung uh, investigation ng committee at saka recommendation ng committee. Basta it will be, it will be uh, processed normally just like any other complaint. Senate Committee on Ethics Chair Senator Vicente Soto III says the complaint will be brought to the floor for discussion by next week along with other pending cases. Agenda yung lahat, pati yung pending mga uh, complaints kasi... We really have to decide also on uh, what to do with the complaints against Senator Dilima. Nahinto kami because uh, she was um, uh, arrested. Meanwhile, Senator Chilianes confirms he is ready to face the complaint. Eh, alam nyo, naiinip na nga ako eh. Uh, sabi niya, akala ko first thing in the morning. So, ngayon, um, inaantay ko lang yan. Pagka dumating yan, diaharapin ko yan. And I will not let it uh, be a distraction dito sa bigger issue na itong si Paolo Duterte at si Man Scarpio ay nai-involve dito sa shabu shipment na ito at sa smuggling sa customs. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Malacanang urges Congress to authorize President Rodrigo Duterte to proceed with the negotiations on the Marcos well. Rosalie Cos tells us why. It is not only President Rodrigo Duterte who will decide on the issue on the Marcos Wealth, wherein Ilocos Norte Governor Aimee Marcos went and talked to the President on their family's decision to surrender part of their properties and some gold bars to the government. President Duterte had earlier said that the Congress must authorize the recovery of the wealth. But Congress must authorize because that is money to be recovered by the government of the Philippines. And that was the offer. I accepted na the explanation na gusto na namin na matapos na. Malacanang also urges the Congress to allow President Duterte to proceed with the negotiations with the Marcos family. We therefore urge the Congress to authorize the President to proceed with negotiations and set parameters, taking into account concerns raised by critics. 
and the citizenry. In line with this, Presidential Spokesperson Under Secretary Ernesto Abelia reiterated the importance of the national reconciliation and closure. However, Abelia was quick to add that the government should carefully follow a well thought of process to assure that justice will prevail and public welfare is protected. It would be best if we all work together for final justice, closure and national reconciliation. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Meanwhile, former Commission on Human Rights Chairperson Eta Rosales insists that President Rodrigo Duterte and the Marcoses have no right to solely decide on the amount the family should return to the government. Rajel Adora tells us why. Former Commission on Human Rights or CHR Chairperson Eta Rosales is against any move of the President to solely discuss with the Marcoses regarding the return of their wealth. The former CHR head and marshal of victims says that since the ill-gotten wealth is the money Marcos has stole from the Filipinos, the people should have a say on the matter. So it is the Filipino people that are sovereign and that are the owners of this fund, not Mr. Duterte in his person, nor the Marcoses. So they have no right making deals with each other. Rosales also emphasized that the fact the Marcoses will return its ill-gotten wealth proves the family stole it from the public. In light of this, she insists the trial regarding the issue should be resumed. Since Mr. Marcos, the late Mr. Marcos, is no longer around and has been unglamorously buried in the living of the Bayani against the will of the people, dahil nangyari yun, ang mga heirs niya ang dapat managot. Meanwhile, a group of martial law victims initially insisted that the Marcos family should return its entire ill-gotten wealth and not just a part of it. Several groups also noted that the culture of impunity in the country will only go stronger if the government accepts the Marcos's offer to return only a part of its ill-gotten wealth and if it will not hold liable those who have committed crimes under the Marcos regime against the country. Rogel Adora, UN News Rescue, Philippines. In other news, the Department of Justice, or DOJ, has ordered an investigation into the killing of 19-year-old UP student Carl Angelo Arnaiz. Meanwhile, an autopsy conducted by the Forensic Laboratory of the Public Attorney's Office reveals that the victim was intentionally killed. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. The FBI will conduct a separate probe on the killing of 19-year-old Carl Angelo Arnaiz. This is to look deeper into how the police handled Carl Angelo's arrest following the allegations that the victim was tortured and killed without mercy. Kaninang maga, first hour in the morning, I issued, and so the NBI will be uh, conducting a parallel investigation on this particular case. Carl's family said he went missing last August 18. After searching for 10 days, they found his body in a morgue in Caloocan City. The PNP claims the victim was killed by Caloocan police after robbing a taxi in Citri Road early morning of August 18. He allegedly engaged responding policemen in a firefight resulting to his death. The PNP has ordered an investigation into the incident but said it should not be compared to the case of Kian Lloyd de los Santos. Ibang iba po yung kaso na yan. That is a case of uh, police uh, response. Nagrespondi po sila dahil may taxi driver na hinold up. However, an autopsy conducted by the medical legal of the public authorities' office revealed the victim was intentionally killed. He suffered three gunshot wounds to the chest, one on the side, and another at the back of his arm. There are also various wounds on his body, indicating he was handcuffed and beaten. So all, all in all, um, naposa siya, binugbog, kinalagkat, at saka pinatay. Uh, ang terminology po namin ginagamit sa mga ganun at lalo na ko ang tama ay nandun sa mga um, vital uh, organs ay intentional killing. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice has expressed its readiness to secure the victim's family under the Witness Protection Program. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. 
The Department of Justice, or DOJ, sets to start the preliminary investigation on Kian Loy de los Santos Slay case on September 12, Tuesday. This is to determine whether there is enough evidence to file charges against the four Kaluokan police who were involved in the killing of Kian. The parents of the young man have earlier filed murder and torture complaints against Chief Inspector Amor Cerillo, PO3 Arnel Juarez, PO1 Jerwin Cruz, and PO1 Jeremiah Spereda. The National Bureau of Investigation also filed murder and planting of evidence complaints against the four police officers. The DOJ will then consolidate the said complaint. The death of Richard Prevendido, the alleged drug lord or the alleged top drug lord of Western Visayas could help improve the image of Iloilo City according to the local police. Victor Cosare tells us why. Last year, President Rodrigo Duterte called Iloilo City as the, quote, most shovelized city, end of quote. This prompted policemen in the area to cleanse the city by launching a series of anti-illegal drug operations. Just last Friday, the Regional Police Office claims killing Richard Prevendido, alias Buang, a high-value target and the alleged top drug lord in Western Visayas. With this development, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, believes his death will help in improving the image of Iloilo City. <laughs> The police say it would also help lower the number of index crimes in the area, noting that robbery, theft, rape and murder incidents are normally connected to illegal drug activities. Meanwhile, following the death of Prevendido, the next target of the PNP Region 6 is Ernesto Erning Bolivar, the alleged sub-leader of the former's drug group. Bolivar previously peddled illegal drugs for the Odicta drug group and is involved in gun-for-hire activities. This is a warning bilang sa lahat ng mga pusibling na involved, polisman o politiko, and this will serve as a very strong evidence kung makita natin na nagdudulot siya. The PNP Region 6 vows to not stop in its anti-illegal drug operations until it completely eradicates illegal drug activities in Iloilo City and Western Visayas. Victor Fosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte has canceled the reassignment of Police Chief Inspector Jove Espinido to Iloilo City. Monoxon will tell us why. Dahil nga, uh... Ma-demoralize yung mga tao sa Usamis kung tanggalin natin si Espinido doon. At may balita pa ka, mag-people power sila pag tanggalin si Espinido doon sa Usamis. Kaya nagbago yung isip ni Presidente. Sabi niya, pabigyan muna natin yung mga taga-Usamis. This was the statement of PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa following President Rodrigo Duterte's cancellation of Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido's transfer to Iloilo City. Espinido previously said he still has unfinished business in Ozama City. Nandyan pa yung kapatid ni Aldong, pamangkin ni Aldong, na mga leaders, no? leader ng, leaders ng organized crime groups dito sa Osamis. Sir, tapusin ko muna ang Osamis. Period. Go. So, Kumaka, kumakaabot na dito sa atong presidente, sa atong CPNP, kananaabot pa. Also, the PNP chief confirms the existing threat from the Parohinog supporters in the city. De La Rosa also agrees that Espinido should stay in Ozamas City because he said Mayor Jed Patrick Mabilog is doing well in the fighting against illegal drugs in Iloilo City. Last week, the police killed one of Iloilo's most wanted drug personality, Richard Prevenido. As compared uh, before, medyo gumaganda ang uh, takbo ngayon. But sana, tuloy-tuloy na yan. Although PNP Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa is pleased in what is happening in Iloilo City, he will not relax unless illegal drug trade is totally eradicated, not only in Iloilo, but in the entire country. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Next on Y News. 
The Interior and Health Departments clarify confusions regarding the implementation of the nationwide smoking ban. Government prepares contingency plans for Filipinos overseas amid the latest nuclear threat from North Korea. And Pagasa monitors new tropical cyclone inside PAR as it begins to affect northern Luzon. White News will be right back. An anti-pork barrel group is asking the department to probe the alleged 2.5 billion peso missing fund under the Disbursement Acceleration Program or DAP. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. A group led by former Manila Councilor Greco Belhica is asking the DOJ to probe the alleged anomaly in the funds covered by the Disbursement Acceleration Program or DAP. They claim that based on documents obtained from the DBM, some 2.6 billion peso fund under the Aquino administration's DAP was missing. Of the 144 billion pesos released through the DAP, over 17 billion went to legislators and LGUs. But the projects endorsed accounted for only over 14 billion. Belhica wants malversation charges against former President Noynoy Aquino, former Budget Secretary Boots Abad, and former Under Secretary Mario Relampagos. Sila lang nakakaalam kasi um, yun nga ang tiyatanong natin, isa na punta actually. So it's a clear case of malversation that should have only been done in their position. The group submitted the documents to the DOJ for investigation and verification. In 2014, the Supreme Court declared as illegal the cross-border transfer of funds under DAP. The group also accused Senator Antonio Trillanes of having ghost projects funded by DAP. Trillanes allegedly received DAP funds on three occasions, totaling 245 million pesos. These include the 50 million pesos whom then Senator Jingo Estrada claimed to have been used as bribe for the senators to convict former Chief Justice Renato Corona in his impeachment trial. Based on our further investigation, uh, meron mga parang uh, pinundohan na hindi nagawa na project. Yung mga ilong nga, no? tapos uh, uh, anong nangyari dito, Mer nagkaroon nga ng streetlights pero ibang pondo pinanggalingan na. The group claims to have witnesses to support the claim. Meanwhile, UNTV News is still trying to reach Aquino and Trillanes for a comment. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Former DNR Secretary Gina Lopez is worried on the possible consequence if the ban on open pit mining will be lifted. Ray Pelayo tells us why. It violates the constitutional right of our people. Please, 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 please don't allow it to be lifted. Former Environment Secretary Gina Lopez appeals to President Rodrigo Duterte not to allow the lifting of the ban on the open pit mining in the country. During her term, she ordered the closure of 22 open pit mining operations and their subsequent ban due to their effect on the environment. The holes will be there forever. They put our country at risk. It's a financial liability to government. Lopez warns that, based on the experts' estimates, the country will face a widespread water crisis in 2030 and that protection of water sources and resources is imperative. J.B. Carganera of the Alianza Tigilmina, or ATM, underscored the gravity of the effect of the open pit mining operation because of the depth of the indentation it creates. So once na tinamaan mo na yung water table o yung source ng tubig doon sa ilalim ng lupa, apektado na niyan yung tubig pang irigasyon, tubig pang uh, domestic na use ng mga tao. Garganera says they already heard the issue of possible lifting up the ban on open pit mining last month. Palagay ko hiniling na regalo ng industriya ng pagmimina dito sa DENR na kung maaari, eh, tanggalin na yung ban on open pit na yan. 
The Chamber of Mines of the Philippines says they don't know any other country in the world that has introduced a ban on open pit mining. If we want the minerals and the metals that this industry extracts, that we use for our daily lives in almost everything, most of the time it is mined by open pit. The chamber created an oversight committee to investigate complaints against their members. UNTV is still waiting any statement from the DNR regarding the issue. Ray Pelayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Agriculture might change the existing guidelines on addressing the bird flu virus outbreak in the country. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. During today's budget hearing in the Senate, Department of Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinol says they are now studying the possibility of changing the protocols in addressing disease or virus outbreaks like in the case of the avian flu. The plan is also expected to help those in the livestock industry. Under the current guidelines, authorities have to call all fowls affected by bird flu within the one kilometer radius from the virus-infested farm. Kasi sabi ng iba, sa Europe daw pa ngayon ma'am, hindi na po ganun ang protocol. Kung saan yung farm na tinamaan, yun lang ang uh, dinidepopulate and then the rest surveillance area lang. Meanwhile, the United Broilers Racers Association or UBRA says, It will uh, increase consumer confidence, increase demand. Eventually, sana sooner than later, ay tumakta yung presyo sa farm. In line with the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food Chair Senator Cynthia Villar seeks to allocate a bigger fund for the livestock industry due to the huge impact the bird flu virus brought to poultry owners and workers. Ito ang question ko dito sa agriculture. You give 88% of your budget to crops which is producing 50% of your output and you give 12% to the combination of fisheries and livestock. Hawang-hawa ako sa livestock eh. Secretary Pinol said he is open to the lady senator's proposal. Meanwhile, Secretary Pinol assures that the government is in control of the avian flu virus outbreak in some parts of Luzon. Pinol says it is also impossible that the virus will spread in Visayas and Mindanao because of the tight security enforced at ports and strict monitoring of farms across the country. Ang ginawa po namin, uh, we strengthened actually the monitoring and surveillance. Uh, in fact, I have directed all regional directors to conduct the samplings of all farms all over the country. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government and the Department of Health jointly dispel confusions over the implementation of the nationwide smoking ban. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Confusion abounds over the implementation of the nationwide smoking ban particularly on the designated smoking areas in the cities. In this morning's interview with Kuya Daniel Razon on the program Huntahan, Department of the Interior and Local Government Assistant Secretary Epimaco Densin clarified that although business establishments must have designated smoking areas, smoking in open spaces is also allowed. The local government units, who are the principal implementers of the said law, are also the ones designating the specific smoking areas. O kasi po, eh, nakoconfuse din ako dun sa public places. Kagaya nyo, sabi nyo, eh, pag nasa daan ka, open space, pwede ka magsigarilyo. Opo. Tama po ba yun? Opo, pwede naman po. Pwede eh kasi po, po, public place yun eh. Okay. Ang dinefine na Executive Order No. 26 mm -hmm. na public places mm -hmm. ay very specific ko yung definition niya. Mm -hmm. na, uh, hospital, mm -hmm. uh, paaralan, mga palengke. Mm -hmm. So ito, whether open or closed, basta nandun ho yan, considered public place ho yan. Mm -hmm. Pero yung mga open space na tinatawag, yung uh, daanan, basta ho walang gubong sa gitna ng daan, pwede naman, allowed naman ho magsigarilyo. The Department of Health, on the other hand, says every city has its own ordinance against smoking that need to be adhered to. With this, different interpretation arise on determining smoking and non-smoking areas. Kung sinaman nila pati yung naglalakad bawal, kahit wala sa EO26, bawal. Oh, so depende kung ano yung ordinance na pinaiiraw. It can be recalled that Health Secretary Polino Bial had mentioned that the DILG is responsible for the strict implementation of the smoking ban and that the LGU should have a smoke-free task force. I don't have that data but uh, that is the system that we have adopted as soon as we have reports of certain LGUs not implementing the EO then we call the attention of the ILG. 
The DOH once again warns the public to report to their hotline all violators of the said law. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The second verified impeachment complaint against Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno has been filed and endorsed in the lower house this evening. The complaint was the Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption or VACC and endorsed by 16 congressmen. The complaint is based on culpable violation of the Constitution and betrayal of public trust by allegedly committed by the Chief Magistrate. These include the creation of the Regional Court Administration Office and Judiciary Decentralized Office by Sereno allegedly without the consensus of other justices of the Supreme Court and deciding on her own on SC resolutions without consulting the Anbang. Dapat nang uh, alisin si Sereno dahil sa mga katiwalian na kanyang uh, ginagawa. Uh, naniniwala po kami na ito ay magpo-prosper at marami pa pong sasama sa amin pipirma. And the Court of Appeals or CA today upholds the Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 221 ruling that allows Sajid Ampatuan to post bail on the Maguindanao massacre case where he is the one of the principal accused. In the four-page resolution of the CA 16th Division, the court denies the appeal of the prosecution panel to overturn the RTC decision following the release of Police Inspector Rex Ariel Diongon as state witness. The prosecution believes that Diongon's testimony has helped strengthen the case against Sajid and that the CA has to reverse the decision of Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes. The CA, however, says their authority is only to check whether there was abuse on the part of Judge Reyes when she allowed Sajid to post bail in August of 2015. The court adds that taking Diongin in as witness has nothing to do with the said decision of the RTC. In other news, the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP is still verifying the report on the alleged death of one of the three leaders of the Maute terrorist group in Marawi City. AFP Western Mindanao Command Lieutenant General Carlito Galvez says they received the said information from one of their sources. Abdullah Maute was allegedly killed in an airstrike between the 14th and 26th of August. Galvez notes the military can only confirm his death once his remains were recovered covered and undergoes DNA testing. Meanwhile, Omar, the sibling of Abdullah who was previously reported killed, is still alive according to the latest information received by the AFP. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRMC calls on the public to not disregard the emergency alerts they receive in their mobile phones. Ray Pelayo explains why. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, has recently received various reactions from the netizens. The reactions were about the emergency alert and warning messages the agency sent to the public with the help of the National Telecommunications Companies, or NTC. These emergency alert messages were about the earthquakes, typhoons, and upcoming heavy rainfalls. Some are thankful, but others are annoyed and consider the alert messages as nuisance. However, NDRRMC spokesperson Romina Marasigan says the public should take the alert messages seriously. Marasigan notes it only aims to provide the public with the necessary warning in order for them to prepare. Napakahalaga po na mabigyan po kayo ng karampatan ng kaalaman. Ang sabi nga po natin lagi, ang tamang kaalaman ay kahandaan. The NDRRMC spokesperson says the agency will continue to send alert messages to everyone even though some are mad at it. She says the law states that the NDRRMC should provide warnings to the public when there is an upcoming calamity. The Pinagtitibay natin, Republic Act 10639, ito yung Free Disaster, uh, Mobile Disaster Alerts Act. The NDRRMC emergency alert messages are sent to cell phone users and can be received by individuals with telephones with cellular broadcast system. Users may hear sirens from their mobile or smartphones when receiving emergency alert and warning messages from the NTC. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Concerned government agencies are on alert following the latest missile launch from North Korea. Aiko Miguel tells us why. 
South Korean defense officials confirmed North Korea conducted another nuclear bomb test over the weekend. Pyongyang has initially warned of launching a missile attack targeting Guam, a U.S. Pacific territory. It can be noted North Korea also launched an intercontinental ballistic missile test that flew over Japan last month. This prompted the Philippine government to conduct steps that would protect Filipinos abroad in the event the nuclear threat from North Korea further escalates. The Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA, says Philippine embassies in affected areas are prepared for any eventuality. Under the contingency plan of each post, we will activate the contingency plan when there is a, when there is a crisis. Even the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration or OWA has prepared contingency plans. We speak as one voice because DFA and DOLE agreed on a contingency manual. So, yung ating uh, uh, contingency manual, a plan of action, nakadayan all embassies in the in the in Philippine embassies in the world. So, hindi na iba yung embahadi na embahada natin sa Seoul, sa Seoul. The Office of the Civil Defense or OCD is also on alert should Pyongyang's missile and nuclear threats further escalate. Prating ang first responders yan, yung ating LGUs. Ginagabayan natin sila, binibigyan natin sila ng guidance at abiso kung paano sila dapat mag-prepare. The OCD says the public should take the missile test of North Korea seriously, especially since Pyongyang seems to have no intention to stop it. Aiku Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Coming up on Y News, residents of Seoul express concerns after North Korea conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear test. Princess Mako soon to become a commoner after the Japanese Imperial Palace officially announces her engagement. And DSWD recognizes Kamangagawa Foundation Incorporated or KFI, UNTV's partner in public service as one of its licensed foundations. More from Y News after this break. The Philippine Movie Press Club awarded movie icons Nora Honor and Vilma Santos as Gininto Ang Between ng Pelikulang Pilipino and the Movie Actress Award or the Movie Actress of the Year Award. Leslie Longbowen will tell us why. Superstar Nora Honor and star for all seasons Vilma Santos. For 50 years of dominance in the cinema, they became known as the foundation of the film industry. In this year's 33rd Star Awards held last night, the two actresses were given the Ginintuang Between ng Pelikulang Pilipino recognition. The two share their secrets for staying long in the industry. Ay, hindi siguro ako tatagal. At uh, ng ganitong uh, 50 years, ano, kaya lahat yun ay pinagpapasalamat ko uh, tulad na sinabi ko sa Diyos at uh, pangalok ko ng mga fans. Hindi ganun kadali yun, no? hard work din yun, uh, being yourself, so uh, seryoso ka sa trabaho, dedication, walang tigil na pasasalamat sa lahat ng mga taong tumutulong sa iyo noon, magpa hanggang ngayon. Aside from the said award, the two Philippine cinema icons also received the Movie Actress of the Year Award for the movies Cabisera and Everything About Her. Nora and Vilma do not disregard the possibility that they would do a movie together. Kung mayroong magandang proyekto, uh, na, na, parang tiber na tako na naayon o tumutugma sa amin, sa amin dalawa, ay bakit hindi? Ang hinihini ko lang sa ngayon ay uh, yung makagawa pa ng mga pelikula na di kalidad. Nang sa ganun ay uh, maipakita pa rin sa mga kabataan natin na dapat uh, tagilikin nila ang mga pelikula na sariling atin sapagkat lalo na kapag kinapupulutan ng aral. Leslie Lombowen, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Titled Dios Ang Bahala won in the first weekly elimination of the A Song of Praise or ASOP Music Festival. Robbie De Guzman tells us why. And our winning song, our first 
song of the week will automatically be a part of our... Only two songs are now needed to complete the 12 entries for the grand finals of the A Song of Praise or ASOP Music Festival Year 6. Last night was the start of the selection process for the grand finalist for the month of September. The song about one's trust in God won as the first weekly winner for this month. Marvin Cortez, Diyos ang bahala! Marvin Cortez, the composer of the song Dios Ang Bahala, believes everyone needs the help of God in surpassing the problems and challenges in life. Bali kasi yung song is about kung paano natin dapat talaga i-handle yung mga problems natin. Kumbaga, ang makakapagpagaan din sa kalooban natin is yung isuko natin lahat sa, sa Panginoon. Kumbaga, pagtulog natin sa gabi, sabihin na lang natin, Diyos ko, kayo na po ang bahala. Judges were amazed by the song composed by the Bulacenio. Pero overall, very commercial siya. Pambanda. Madali siyang uh, makomprehend, very commercial ang melody. Ah. Ang lakas ng dating niya, kung ako ay nagpaproduce pa rin ng mga albums, eh, malakas ang recall dito. Uh, I think it's a very strong chorus, by the way, so I, I really like it. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. One of the partners of UNTV in its public service efforts, the Kamangagawa Foundation Incorporated, or KFI, can now continue its operations in providing aid and care to our indigent compatriots. Joan Nano tells us why. The Department of Social Welfare and Development has renewed the registration and license of the Kamangagawa Foundation Incorporated or KFI. DSWD has recognized KFI as one of its licensed foundations and partners in providing aid and care to our compatriots in need, especially the poor. The DSWD awarded KFI a certificate of registration and license for its continued support to the government's good advocacies. With this, the KFI can finally receive funds from DSWD and donations from inter national organization or groups that it can use in bringing more aid to those in need. Ang mahalaga doon ay na-establish namin ang uh, legitimacy ng mga organisasyon, nakita namin ang kanilang kakayahan at kahandaan para makipagtulungan sa DSWD. Bilang uh, katuwang ng uh, DSWD, uh, pwede na po kaming uh, mag-share ng mga resources uh, para sa pagtulong sa ating mga kababayan. The DSWD notes it's not easy for a charitable foundation to secure a license, especially since it needs to undergo thorough screening of its qualifications and requirements. The KFI, meanwhile, has expressed deep gratitude to the recognition and privilege it received from the DSWD. Ating ikinalulugod at pinagpapasalamat talaga ng uh, malaki sa Panginoon dahil uh, uh, ito'y nagpapatunay na hindi lamang naman ang ating layon ay uh, makatulong sa kapwa kundi patuloy din naman tayong makakumply doon sa hinihiling ng ating mga ahensya ng gobyerno. Kaya tayo ay uh, nagpapasalamat din sa DSWD dahil kinikilala nila yung uh, ating effort na makapagpundar o makapagpatuloy sa pagdamay uh, sa mga nangangailangan hindi lamang doon sa mga walang tahanan kundi maging doon sa may mga kapansanan, sa mga dinaanan ng kalamidad at iba't iba pang mga tao na nangangailangan ng tulong. The Kamangagawa Foundation Incorporated is a non-profit organization that aims to help and improve the lives of the poor, senior citizens, people suffering from illnesses, persons with disability and orphan Filipinos through the leadership of Brother Eli Soriano and Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Razon. For now, the KFI is exerting more efforts in assisting and supporting various charitable activities of UNTV like medical missions, feeding programs and free college education among others. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Those are the reasons behind the news. September 4, 2017, I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know 
we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why News. Why News.